Hello, everybody. This is Nick Cates, and welcome to Nick Cates Design, where I share only my biased opinion on web design. Right now, as I've started this podcast, I look out my window and I can see a deer that got a little freaked out by my intro. <laughs> And he's got to standing up and he's not sure what to do. He's just looking right at me. I do live in the forest, guys. I do live in the forest. I haven't always, but um, I just love nature. And I uh, wanted to be closer with nature. And uh, also I isolate myself from crazy people. <laughs> this deer is just frozen. Just frozen watching me as I'm trying to make a podcast. It does feel awkward. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to try not to look at that deer looking at me. Now the mama deer is walking to the baby deer to check on her. Oh man, guys, I really have to focus. I, I'm going to struggle with this one. So I've been mostly working on stack stuff. Uh, stack stuff. If you don't know what stack stuff is, uh, if you have Rapid Weaver for Mac, uh, the biggest plugin for Rapid Weaver is Stacks, and I make stacks which are like uh, kind of like widgets for WordPress. And um, I don't know, you can do some really cool functionality inside of Stacks. And um, yeah, I make a lot of them. Check them out. So, anyways, I've been making a few stacks, getting wetter, getting uh, redder. Uh, ready for a few releases um, before the winter time hits, and I mostly take a break from uh, being so busy. Um, but uh, funny thing, yesterday I spent maybe, I spent maybe, gosh, two or three hours just testing out microphone. After microphone, going test, one, two, three, welcome to Nick Cates Design. Um, I did that because I'm a nutcase, and I just really am into uh, just the highest possible quality, I guess in all things, but especially in audio. I'm really, um, before I did web design, I, um, I was huge into recording like music, um, other bands, and uh, just, you know, obviously my own stuff. I'm a musician at heart. Um, it's been a long time since I did that because I got into web design and had kids, and then you really don't have time to just sit there and play guitar or play drums. But but I do have those things, and I do enjoy them. Um, but anyway, uh, from my recording days and over time, as I've, like, now that I have money to, like, buy nice music equipment, um I have really good mics. Uh, and so yesterday I was just kind of going through all of them, trying to see which one sounds best. And probably to you guys out there, it doesn't matter. Maybe it all sounds the same. I don't know. But uh, I care. I really care. <laughs> and right now I, uh, I'm i using this setup that I like the character of it, but it's got this um, this noise floor right now. So if there's moments of silence and you just kind of like really turn up the volume you can hear this buzz i'm going to fix this buzz people i'm going to fix it um but everything else about this setup i really love so i'm, I'm going i'm going with it anyway it's uh it's funny because you know people will even when you look up like podcasting and microphones a lot of them are pretty inexpensive and some would say you can even, you know, do your podcast with your phone. <laughs> I know Gary V would say do your podcast with your phone. <laughs> Whatever you got, go for it, right? Um, but uh, I do like Gary V. He actually helped break me out of um, uh, not delivering because of perfection. Um you know, trying to get something, uh, just nutting up over details and delaying a release of something and just trying to get everything right. And Gary V helped me kind of get over myself a little bit and, um, just kind of not 
uh, not worry about perfection as much and, and focus more on delivering things, delivering value, you know, um, just getting things out there. Right. Um, but you know, I think that's, I think that's about all I can agree <laughs> with Gary V. Now that I look back, I really, uh, I was really, I really dug it at the time. Um, but now I would say quality does matter. I mean, if you keep pushing out content all the time, like for one, what are you going to have to talk about? That's really quality. I don't know. Um, and, and for two, if you're just pushing things out and you're not building a brand of quality, uh, people just are not going to associate quality. So I am not, I wouldn't say you should just, uh, put things out there, uh, no matter what, uh, just get her done. Um, no, no, because the quality of your work, um, will be uh, everything you do marks the quality of your work, whether that's poor, mediocre, or like really polished and awesome. I don't go for, um, super polished anymore, but, uh, I try to do a really, really good job because guys and girls, it's important. Uh, it's important until, until robots replace web designers. <laughs> that's kind of one of the things that I've, that's been on my mind. I've been, um, looking at different, uh, tools out there for web design. Uh, just, I mean, long story short, I've been just been looking at different, uh, services, like mostly for like SEO. I was just really curious about just the different offerings out there. And I've been running into a really fascinating uh, business concept that this uh, SEO company had where they use AI um, to actually give you like the content that you're supposed to like create your site with Uh, because they say, okay, well, we can see the keywords you're trying to uh, hit upon and... um, and based on those keywords and based on your competitors, if you start adjusting your copy and start talking like this, and here's like an example paragraph made by the AI, then uh, then you'll rank higher, you know, and then it can... So it basically does all the figuring out for you. It basically is creating copy for you. And folks, if AI can create copy... <laughs> oh man, web designers, we are so screwed. <laughs> I know some of you, some of you are really artsy. Some of you web designers out there are really artsy, really creative. But, um, but I, I, I don't know. I think that eventually AI design, um, will, will be what works for a vast, vast majority of people. I think that computers or artificial intelligence can do a better job, not only with creating content um, uh, that a human will like, uh, because boy, man, (laughs) clients struggle so hard to explain their own value. They really do. I think if, uh, if you had this robot, I can envision it one day, you have this robot and you tell... You tell the robot, okay, my business, my business is I make donuts and my unique value is, uh, I make bacon, bacon wrapped, uh, you know, caramel donuts or maple donuts, not caramel. What am I talking about? Who puts caramel on a donut? (laughs) Maple. Thank you. A bacon maple donut. I think that's going to be all you need to feed to the machine, uh, before he could start the machine, he, the robot, geez, before the robot starts saying like, just these beautiful paragraphs of how these delicious, you know, come get your hot, fresh, you know, bacon, maple donuts at this location. Here's our hours and here's a discount that, you know, we've created, you know, for the first time buyers. I mean, it's going to be so good that businesses won't create their own copy. Many of you business owners struggle to create your own copy. My goodness. (laughs) I had a I had a funny conversation even uh with um oh a friend of mine who makes uh 
what a lot of uh, websites for businesses and we were talking about copy and he was just showing me this uh how appalling just some of this um copy was that the uh that the business owner gave to him to put in his website and and he was just like no no we can't use this i'm so sorry thank you for making this but we can't use this <laughs> and it's so true it's it's just uh robots are better at at many things especially when they're learning especially when they're learning i know that wix is um has an ai web builder i have no experience with it um maybe i should have had experience with it if i was going to be talking about it i did not know that i'd be talking about ai web design until like sitting down in this chair so i'm sorry <laughs> for not being more prepared. But uh, yeah, I know. So Wix has one. I think that, um, ooh, man, the, I think the first WordPress developer that can make an AI builder plugin that charges a monthly fee, that it is like a good one. I think, I think they're going to own their own island and their own yacht <laughs> because... Because I think it's going to hit a home run. Anyway, uh, let's move off of uh, AI stuff, I guess. One of, uh, one of the feedback emails that I got, which I'm thankful for. I, I appreciate uh, those that do email and let me know what they think of the show, this podcast show. Um, anyways, uh, one of the people emailed me, like the show, um, but he mentioned wanting well uh, first of all he appreciated um how in the rapid weaver um design area um that i'm able to create designs that seem polished and uh, refined um i don't know a better way to say that right now and he wanted to hear more kind of how i do that and um just kind of like tricks to that and you know i i actually did think about that I um, am thinking I've wanted to experiment with uh, like a subscription-based product at low cost um, to offer web designers and business owners. And I think that one of the ideas that I'm, I might play with, uh, everyone let me know what you think, is um, creating videos. Um, I, I can like, I can find something that's really polished out there online or I can create something uh, like a, like something that would go in a website, just one element, right? But it looks really good. And I could make a short video expressing or kind of going over like how to do this from start to finish all with actual code and explaining, um, what is going on in the code, uh, to make this happen so that it's educational and you're getting you're understanding the ability of how to make this in your own website and you're learning to code from scratch. And I think that rapid weaver and stacks are great. Um, but I mean, a lot of times you're, you're gonna, you're gonna wish you knew how to code something from scratch because it's just not in a stack. And, um, and yeah, you, you don't want to be held back by anything you want you might envision something that'd be great on the page and you might have no idea how to, how to get there. And so now you're in the spot like, well, gosh, I mean, who do I contact for this? And so it's, it's a really strong tool to have to uh, know how to even just get your feet wet with at least modifying elements on a web page and kind of tweaking them to what you want them to do. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'd have a lot of fun with that. Um, and I don't know, like, I'm going to throw it out there like $5 a month for web designers and business owners to come and check out all these different um, pre-built uh, things that you could put on a web page. And then I just kind of walk through like what it took to build those things. So a lot of videos, access to the code, that kind of thing. That was my idea. Aside from that, it, trying to describe in a podcast how to like get something really refined. <sighs> It's tough. <laughs> it's really tough because um, 
design is such a visual thing, or a lot of uh, web design is visual, obviously. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'll have to keep thinking about how to like work that into the podcast. I have mindsets, really. I have mindsets, and and that I a mindset that I bring into everything that I design. Um, I noticed that with myself, so I can like get into that with the podcast. But as far as like really getting down on like how things work, I don't know. I don't see how I'm going to do that. But um, anyway, yeah, every podcast I like to do two things. I like to kind of recap what I've um, been doing since the last podcast. Uh, since I'm full time doing web design, uh, owning my own business, Nick Hates Design, so I'm always uh, just doing so much, and I would like to share that with everyone. Uh, maybe it's something valuable, entertaining. I've been going through with that, so I like to do that uh, recap, and I also like to express something really important, uh, like a lesson I've learned along the way. Um, and so I'll just pick one out of the hat. I actually made a list of just valuable things that I've learned, just kind of bullet topics. And so I'll just like pick one randomly. One of the things that I see that, um, that I think would be a good one to, to talk about is to sell one thing at a time. But that quote has stuck with me for ever since I heard it. And every time I try to complicate a message or, you know, you never try to complicate a message, right? Uh, hold on. I don't think anyone sits down to complicate a message or tries to get into uh, overwhelming people. <laughs> no one, no one uh, is making that the goal, but it happens all the time. If you're not really conscious of not overwhelming people, uh, you might think that it's a good idea to kind of share every feature um, in something um, or you... Uh, will give equal weight to all these uh, powerful features in your service. Uh, you will try to give equal weight to what you're offering, and that's a mistake too. Um, or at least I think it's a mistake. I'm not going to tell you guys like what the right way and the wrong way is. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, there you got people that you know, never went to college that are on YouTube making millions with silly videos. So I, you know, who, who's to say what the right way to do things is anyway. Um, but it really resonates deeply that you can sell many things, but only sell one thing at a time. And, you know, this can, this can be taken two different ways. Um, one of them is like, if you're having an email and you're sent like, how do I express this? I, I I do my own marketing emails and I could definitely put like three different products in there, but really it clouds the message. It's like if I'm going to have a sale or something, I really just want one thing for people to think about. It's this product. Do you want this product? You know, this is the value we're offering. Yes or no. And just keep it really simple. By the if you were to put, you know, let's just test this idea. Let's say I put out an email and it's two products, and I and I show the value of both of them, and they're both having a big discount, and I have two products. This changes your mindset into now thinking, do I want this one or do I want that one? That is a new thought that you wouldn't you wouldn't have had in the moment if you had just had an email that was marketing one product with a big discount on it. So you really, you really, I don't think you want to make people think too hard when it comes to like e-commerce, especially e-commerce. I used to, uh, I mean, and just to even get back to the email thing, if I were to put three products, it makes the decision harder. You put 10 products on that email, Forget it. People aren't even going to know where to start. I think that you have to be uh, very careful about selling one thing at a time. Someone told me um, that one of the things they really appreciated about my design is the use of spacing. 
I do. I am huge into spacing, but that's because I really like to have really clear separate thoughts. And so even while you look at my designs and you can't see it immediately in the back of my head, I am thinking sell one thing at a time. I like to like, and if I have to group things, like if I have to put many things on a page, I try so hard to make those many things on a page feel as isolated as possible so that each thing feels like one thing at a time. Uh, like if, if you're a business and um, you have just one product, I feel like that is almost, it's almost better than having a multitude of products to start out with a business. Um, Cause you can take that one product and you could start building up this huge case of like, uh, like briefly what it is. Next section, have a video. Next section, uh, people that have bought it, that love it. Uh, next section, reviews from professionals that use that product. Uh, next section, like uh, the, the deal that you're running on it. Like if you have just one product to sell, I, I really feel like uh, that is much more ideal. It's so much harder to sell many products um, at this, you know, on, on, a, on a website. So that's just my thought. I, I would encourage everyone, you know, as you're working with a client, you know, I think you'll even find that if you can take a client's message and you better believe that client wants to say five things on the top fold of that homepage <laughs> or more, right? I mean, if you're just hitting people with just one thought at a time, one concept, I think that not only will the client find that way more refreshing, but all visitors will appreciate that as well. They'll be able to understand the business, understand the value. And that is pretty key. I just remembered um, this whole idea of sell one thing at a time is super apparent if you go to Apple's own homepage, apple.com. Check that out. You will see sell one thing at a time uh, really, really clearly. I mean they might do it the clearest of any website I'm aware of. Um, they have lots of white space. They have grids. You go on that homepage and you see like 70% they're, they're showing you one thing. Now, of course that one thing changes, but showing you one thing. And if you scroll down a little bit, you then hit that second totally different but second thing, I mean, you guys got to realize Apple has a lot of stuff. They make so much stuff and they very easily um, could just go on and on and on about all these different products immediately on their homepage. They could make 10 blocks and fill that homepage, but, uh, but they realize they know very well that they're selling to humans. And humans, um, if you want to make something easy to mentally digest, uh, can only really handle one thing at a time. Um, you know, even having a conversation with someone, it's very hard if they start going down a different path of, you know, in the conversation, they start talking about something else. It's hard to remember what that first thing was that they were talking about. <laughs> and so it's like, in all ways, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's the layout to your site, just really try to become one with one thing, selling one thing at a time. Uh-oh, I'm looking outside. These deer, something ran up to them and they're like kind of spooked. I'm gonna try to like readjust my chair. Oh, it's an adolescent deer coming to play. Okay, <laughs> he just ran up on him. There was these two deers, they were eating grass and just, just minding their own business. And then all of a sudden this adolescent uh, deer 
just like charges up on him super fast and then like he spooks the other two and then he just like goes to eating like all calmly like what guys what's wrong what are you scared of <laughs> i love it i love it it's so great so anyway i feel like that's enough for this podcast uh podcast number three my goodness i can't believe it i'm uh I'm happy to do this and I will think about how to talk about like um, how to bring polish to websites, but talk about that with your podcast. I will think about that. Okay. Uh, Thank you guys. And I will catch you next time.